Hello, everyone. Welcome to session 11 of LTEC 654. Obviously, the main focus of this week's session is going to be on wrapping up game production project number one. And as you already know, you have done your project design document, you submitted project update number one and project update number two. And so now it is time to hand in your final project. Now, as I mentioned in my initial email for session 11, I have modified the due date of your personal video reflections. Those are going to be due not on Monday, November 7th, but on Monday, November 14th. And I'll talk more about what the expectations are related to that video reflection next week. But for now, I thought it was prudent to simplify things a little bit so each team can focus on handing in the final project for Monday. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about what you need to hand in in just a minute. But before I do that, I just wanted to give you an overview of this week's content. You've probably already started engaging with it, but there are three new tutorials. The first tutorial, number 14, is showing you how to add signals through code. We're also going to learn how to pass data between functions. Now, while that's the main focus of this tutorial, you're also going to learn how to use a drop down button and also how to find a substring of a larger string, which can be useful in computer programming. And then the third tutorial focuses on creating transitions with tweens. And it introduces the concept of a tween and shows you specifically how you could modify the position, the X and Y position of a sprite. Now, please know that you could also change the alpha values. So the transparency, there's lots of different properties that you could adjust with a tween. So this is just the tip of the iceberg that's covered with tutorial 16. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what to hand in. So the project manager for each team is responsible for handing in two items. The first item is a compressed copy of your entire project folder. So this is your Godot project folder that has all of your scenes in it, all of your images, fonts, sounds, everything. But I want you to compress that folder, zip it up, and hand that in. If it's really large because there's lots of assets in there, you can just upload it to Google Drive and send me a link. The second thing that I need you to hand in is a Mac OS installer file. In other words, a disk image. And in a minute, I'm going to show folks how to create that. So those are the two things you need to hand in to finalize your project. Now, a couple of other details. It's important that your games allow full screen mode. If you remember back to one of our earlier tutorials this semester, we talked about how to go allow full screen mode and to adjust the scaling so that the aspect ratio is maintained, but the window stretches to fill the entire screen of the player. And then secondly, your application should include a custom splash screen as well as a unique custom application icon. The idea here by including these details is to really try to present a polished project that is more or less complete. So with all of this in mind, I now want to emphasize exporting your projects. In other words, once you've built it in Godot, how do you export it so that it's playable on an end user's computer? Whether it's an Android tablet, an iOS machine, Mac OS, or Windows. And specifically, we're going to focus on Mac and Windows, because those are the two main operating systems used in this class. And so without further ado, let me walk you through those steps. Okay, in this part of the video, what I want to do is show you how to export your project so that it becomes an application that can be installed either on Mac OS or on Windows desktop. And just to show you an example, obviously I'm working on an Apple system here, but if you look down in my dock, you'll see that they, I have an icon here for a game called Grad School. And if I was to click that, you see a splash screen, it happened very quickly, and then ultimately the Grad School game that I created in Godot opens up. And I could go ahead and interact with this if I wanted to. So what I'm going to show you now is how do you actually create these installers? How do you add a custom icon 
and how do you add a splash screen? So let's take a look at what I have here for resources. So, so I have a image that I want to use as an icon for my game. I also have a splash screen that I wanted to create. That's what is going to be shown immediately when the user launches the application while the game is loading in the background. And this, in this case, it just says an LTech production. And then ultimately what we want to do is create a disk image, a, D a DMG file for Mac OS. And then of course we want to create an executable, which doesn't look like an executable because my machine doesn't know what an executable is for Windows. And when you export for Windows, you get an, an executable and this PCK file. So how do we do all of this in Godot? Well, there's a few things we need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and load up this starter project. And you can see here, if I play this, it, it literally does nothing. It just, there's no interactivity or anything. So how do we add an icon? So the first thing we want to do is come up to project and come up to project settings. And there's a few things that we should do. So first thing is we should give our application a name. And so I'm imagining that I created a game called grad school. And I could put in a little bit of a description here if I wanted to. But importantly, I want to specify what the application icon is. What icon is going to be shown for this application. And so I'm going to come into my resources folder. I've already imported the two files that I already showed you. So I'm going to come into images and then I've got one specified icon. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And boom, that's going to be set there. If you want to get a little bit fancier, you can do native icons for either Mac OS or Windows. Those are entire sets of icons that scale properly. We don't need to get into those details for this. And then I can take a look at the run. Let's see if there's anything here. Nope, nothing I need here. And then I want to come to the boot splash screen. So when the application is booting up, what image do we want to show? And you can see here, it says image. And so what we can do is click on this folder, come into assets, come into images, and then click our splash screen and click open. Now there's a few other things we may want to do for our game. I'm going to come over to window and we might want to enable it to become full screen. And of course, we may want to ensure that it scales properly. So the stretch mode we could set to 2D and for aspect ratio, it could be ignore or keep. I'm going to keep the aspect ratio so that it always looks the way that I've designed it. Okay, so with those settings set up, now what we want to do is actually export this. So what I'm going to do is come up to project and then click on export. Now by default, you have no templates or export packages ready. So what you need to do is click on add and it's going to show you all of the target platforms from Android and iOS to HTML5 to Mac OS, Windows and Linux that you can export for. So I'm on a Mac, so let's click Mac OS X. I'm going to select there and then boom, you're going to see all this red warning text come up. And the first thing it's going to say is no export template found at the expected path. So what we have to do is actually download the export template. So we're going to click here, manage export templates. And then it's going to say export templates are missing, download them or install them from a file. It's already connected to a download site. You can just leave it on the best available mirror and click download and install. And that's going to kick off the download process. And this will take a minute depending on how fast your internet connection is because it's downloading quite a bit. Okay, once that's finished downloading, go ahead and click close or okay and you're gonna come back here and now you're still seeing some warning text here, but it's not that big of a deal. So what you wanna do is fill in a little bit of information over here on the right hand side. So you wanna come over to name and you can give your game a name and I'm gonna call mine grad school. And you can put in a little information here such as made with Godot engine, or you can have fun with that or made by group A, whatever you want. Now I'm gonna choose the icon that's gonna go with the game. Come back over to images, choose icon. And then uh, Apple requires an identifier. And so you can just put in whatever you want right now. Uh, you could put in your name 
or some sort of piece of information. Now, ideally, if you have an account with Apple, you will actually have a unique identifier that you would put in there, but you don't need to do that right now. And you could just sign your name if you wanted to, and you could specify what type of application this is, such as just games. You can adjust the version number, and then you might want to do copyright, like LTEC 2022 or whatever you want there. It's a good idea to choose high resolution in case folks have the high resolution monitors. And most of this other stuff, you can just leave blank. Oh, it looks like I can't put a space in there. So I'm just, I'll am just i just put Hoffman as my identifier. And now what you'll see is you have the possibility to actually export. But before we export for Mac OS, what we can do is actually add yet another target. And so I'm going to target Windows Desktop. And because we've already downloaded all of the templates, everything is pretty much the same. Now, there's one small catch with Windows. What you want to do is turn off this Modify Resources. And if you deselect that, the warning goes. And now what you can do is export for these different platforms. And so I'm going to go ahead and export the project for Mac OS. It's going to ask me where I want to save it. And I'm going to just call this grad school B so we can see the difference. And I'm going to go ahead and click save. And it's going to begin the exporting process and let it make that disk image. It takes a little minute. And ultimately, you'll see project export completed successfully. And that's how you know you actually have your application. I can do the same thing again for Windows, export project, and it's going to ask me where. By default, it's going to go to the uh, same location that I've already specified, and it is a Windows desktop export executable file. I'm going to click Save. So if I come back to my desktop, I should see all of these new exports that actually happened. So I've got my new executable here, which is grad school B. And I'm just going to double click on it and boom, there's my game. And then I have the two files that are associated with a Windows export. So that, my friends, is how you export your games for use on Mac OS and Windows Desktop.